Hey guys, welcome back to Mateway with the Morleys. I'm Andy, and in this video, we're going to be sharing some of the things that we've learned in the first six months of owning our caravan. So, we thought we'd share the things that we've learned in the first six months of caravanning. Obviously, the first six months for us from September onwards has been throughout the winter and through the autumn. So, some of these may not be too applicable during the summer. So, if you're thinking of just buying now, some of them might not be as applicable. But, you know, we'll do our best to explain things. Um, when you're caravanning in the autumn and the winter, you're not going to be outdoors as much, really, you can be. Um, but the reality being that the living space that you have is probably what you're going to use because it's going to be warm and you're going to heat that. Um, so the layout is, uh, maybe this is a bit of a contentious issue, but the layout side of things, I think, for if you're going to use your caravan all year round, maybe it needs to be slightly different than if you're just using it for sort of the seasonal March to October time. Now, in the autumn and in the winter, with the ambient temperature outside being much colder than it is during the summer, you may get a build-up of damp around the bunks for the kids or on the inside of the caravan. That's normal. When we bought the caravan, it had never been serviced. So although it came with a seven-year warranty against water ingress, that wouldn't have been valid because we wouldn't have been able to prove that it had been serviced ever. So one of the first things we had done was get the caravan serviced. And as part of that service, you get a damp report and we were really pleased to see that um, that we had no damp inside the caravan. Service inside of things I think is is really important. Obviously what your tone has got its own brakes, so it's useful to have a professional look at those. The steadies will need to be greased, the electrics should be checked, um, and there'll be a number of other measures as well. So it, it really does pay to have it serviced, and the reality of it is it doesn't cost that much money. I think it's about 120 quid we paid for a mobile a caravan servicer. Um, and you've got peace of mind that at least everything's been checked over by professional. Now we've made uh, many mistakes on various trips that we've done. The first time we went away we actually ran out of gas whilst we were cooking dinner which was an absolutely shocking uh, experience. Luckily we were not far from home so we were able to just run and get a takeaway and eat that. But that was a real pain in the arse. Now I'll put a link up here to a video where you can check your gas bowl which you all may have seen already but that might be useful um, for you to use. After that experience we went and bought a second bottle of gas. When we when we bought the caravan we didn't buy it through a dealer, we bought it private. It only had one bottle of gas which turned out to be empty. So we quickly bought a second bottle so we should never be in that situation again. Now the first few times that we went away obviously we forgot stuff. That's just because we'd, we'd not been caravanning before and weren't quite sure of all the things we might need. So we quickly made a list and now every time we go away we use the list to check everything off just to make sure we've we've got things and we don't run out of things. Actually the last time we went away, went away we ran out of toilet roll which wasn't ideal. Our advice if you're a family and you're travelling after work on a Friday night so you maybe want to get away for two nights just over, a, just over a weekend would be eat before you go. Certainly with kids unless you're going to a site which is really really super local. Our last video where we shot our trip away to Winchcombe um, that's roughly an hour and 20 minutes from home and we were on the road fairly swiftly. The reality being that by the time you've got there, you've levelled up, you've got your water, you've, got, you've hooked up to the electrics, maybe put an awning up, it's knocking on 7 o'clock and that really for our kids is too late. Um, so our advice would be eat before you go or take some snacks with you so that the kids aren't proper hungry when you get there because if they're hungry their mood is not going to be all that friendly. Now your Acarol will probably need filling daily, it depends how much water you use, obviously how many people are in your party, but as a rule of thumb, uh, top it up daily, it just makes you, just prevents it from, from running out. But in our experience, the toilet generally tends to be need to be emptied every couple of days, so that's one thing we can expect to do. In the sites that we've visited, not many of them have had actual baby rooms or a baby bath, so if you're travelling with a little baby, maybe you want to take a little baby bath with you, um, but not many of the sites that we visited have had that facility. A lot will have sort of parent facility, which is really useful if you don't want other people listening to your kids screaming as you're getting them dressed, like in our case, um, and it gives you a bit more space. Now things like loading, nose weight, all that sort of thing is also really, really important, and you'll get to know what works best for your caravan. Obviously the, the old adage of the heavy items over the axle, um, you want to keep the weight as low as possible, are all fairly straightforward. But don't forget that if you put your clothes in the upper lockers, um, if you add lots and lots of clothes, it's still going to add a good 10, 20 kilos perhaps. Um, so it makes sense just to keep it low. Always leave a spirit level in the caravan. 
that will really help when you come to your site and you can pitch up and you have if you forget a spirit level you can always fill the sink potentially and use that to level it all with a glass of water you're going to do it by eye but hey that's the only way you can do if you forget your spirit level some electric hookups will may require you to put your cable in and twist we experienced that at a site over christmas where i just put it in nothing seemed to come on and then I went to reception and said, I'm not sure if there's anything wrong with this. And they said, ah, you might need to twist it. So, useful to know. Now, one thing we did at the caravan and camping show in February was we actually joined the RSPB. And we'd never thought of doing this before. We were members of the National Trust. And our membership was due to lapse. And we just didn't really use it, to be perfectly honest. And it seemed, it seemed like a bit of a waste of money. But whilst we were at the caravan and camping show... We saw that there was an RSPB stand, got chatting to the guys there, and they drew us in hook, line, and sinker. I'll, I'll be honest, they, they're good at what they do. Um, but there's a lot of ideas for things to do with kids, places to visit, things you can do at home just to attract more wildlife into your garden. And some of those things we'll possibly record in future videos just whilst we're away in the caravan. Things like making uh, bird feeders, um, bug hotels, all these little things that kids love to do. So they've given us some great ideas and inspiration and maybe we'll show you a few of those in weeks and months to come. Now when we bought our caravan it was still fitted with the original tyres that the manufacturer had put on as it left the showroom so they needed to be changed. Um, now we use e-tyres where I work and we've got a fleet of cars and it's really really easy. They'll come to you, they'll change the tyres, just leave them locking up and everything is done for you. And they also do caravan tyres and that was really really useful just to get somebody here on the drive take the tyres off, pop new ones on, and hey presto, you're done. So if you maybe need some tyres, just check out e-tyres. This is not sponsored by any stretch of the imagination, so I've no affiliates uh, or affiliated link to them. I just found that their service is really, really good, um, and they'll come within a day or two, generally, um, and they're pretty reasonably priced. Now, very recently, we've just had some friends who have bought a caravan. They've just bought a Sprite Major 6, and they went away for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And their battery had actually become flat. Now they didn't think it was too much of a problem. It had been left on charge or, or what they thought would be charging in their garage before they went away. Turns out the charger was knackered. So they actually went with the flat battery. And that caused them no end of problems. Even though the battery was flat and obviously you have a charging mechanism within the, um, within the caravan itself when you're connected to electric hookup. That actually meant that it was tripping out the supply. And it's a real shame because they've been looking forward to buying a caravan and been looking for caravans for a, for quite a lot longer than we had. Um, we bought ours and, and I think that maybe spurred them on to, to look a bit deeper and, and to keep looking. So their first trip away, unfortunately for them, was a bit of a bad experience and I really hope for their next few trips that at least they can get some love back for caravanning. Um, otherwise their caravan might be up for sale quite soon. Other bits and pieces that we've learnt... Um, we keep games and stuff in the caravan for the kids. Um, the girls love drawing and colouring in, so we keep a, a big tub of crayons and a load of paper in here just to keep them occupied, certainly if it was raining. Whilst we don't mind going out in bad weather and in the cold, um, you can't do that all day, every day. Uh, we always take a telly with us with a few DVDs so they can always stick one of those on. Uh, the last time we went away, we actually had a problem with our aerial uh, on the caravan. We've been to a few sites actually, so this might be another point. Um, some sites will allow you to hook up to the to the aerial there on your electric hookup point. Um, so you can buy a cable, generally speaking, in a shop. You'll pay through the nose for it, but hey, it might be worth it and you can keep it forever, I suppose. So that rounds up another video. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you've not already done so. And I actually think for this one, please hook us up with some comments of all the things that you've maybe learned that we've we've missed and, and not covered here. Because I think that's probably where the best discussions could be had on this video. Um, because whilst this is aimed at beginners, I'm sure there's many people who are watching this who are well-seasoned caravanners, much more experienced than us. I might want to share a few tips and tricks. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next week for our next video. Possibly have a trip away, but we'll see. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.